The 6 o'clock news starts right now. A mother is still waiting for answers and justice. Her son was hit and killed a month ago. Police are still looking for the driver who hit Richard Tovar on October 19th. Tonight, his mother is sharing a warning for other pedestrians with our Camilla Juarez. His life was music, yeah. His children and music. He brought them up loving music. Memories are all Susan Teas has left of her son, Richard Tovar. The rapper and father of three was hit while walking along West Commerce Street near Northwest 24th Street and Our Lady of the Lake University. San Antonio police say Tovar was not in the crosswalk that night, but the driver did not stop to check on him. You left him there to die. And I just ask that you turn yourself in. Because, I mean, God knows who you are. Tejas is also concerned that someone else could become a victim. We're at the intersection where the crash happened and the warning lights do work when you push the button. However, that doesn't mean that all the cars will slow down. These cars won't stop even though they push the, the button to cross the street. They don't slow down. Some don't slow down. You'd be lucky if some do. You know, you'd be lucky if one does slow down. SAPD says the driver who hit Tovar was in a silver Chevy Impala. Crime Stoppers is offering a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. Something Teas is waiting for. You know, that's my son. That's a part of me that died. He's going to be missed a lot. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. If you have any information about the October 19th crash, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Tips can also be texted to the word CRIMES at 274-637. Arson investigators have arrested a woman who they say set fire to a memorial dedicated to 53 migrants who died inside of a sweltering tractor trailer on the southwest side over the summer. Firefighters were called out early yesterday morning around 6 a.m. to put out what they said was an unauthorized burn. It was in the 9600 block of Quintana Road. Turned out that that was a fire at that memorial site. Investigators believe that 44-year-old Estela Banda was the person responsible, and they say she later admitted to setting part of that memorial on fire. She has now been charged with arson. At least eight crosses were damaged, but people have already rallied to get them back up again. The minute that they knew how many crosses had been damaged, they went to Home Depot, they bought the wood, they wanted to do this as a personal contribution to their, their fellow uh, humans who had, had passed away here. Councilwoman Rocha Garcia said they will increase patrols in the area and are still working to get a permanent memorial at that location. In tonight, San Antonio police searching for a suspect who shot a man during an apparent robbery attempt. That shooting happened just before 430 this morning on South Calavera Street near Elvira Street. It's on the west side. San Antonio police say a man in his 20s tried robbing a woman in her in he, tried robbing a man in his 40s, shot him in the leg. Police say the suspect was wearing a hoodie and had a neck tattoo. Officers say he left in a silver sedan with one working headlight. The victim expected to be okay. This is an ongoing investigation. A woman is now back in jail after allegedly threatening a former Bear County District Attorney and his family. 55-year-old Rebecca Araguin is accused of threatening to harm attorney Nico LaHood and his family. The original arrest warrant states that she called LaHood's law firm more than 100 times last spring and left threatening voicemails. She blamed LaHood for her convictions while he was the DA. Aragin was arrested in July and released on a $20,000 bond. She was ordered not to contact LaHood or anyone in his family. She was arrested again on Tuesday for violating those conditions. Her bond is set at $50,000. Tonight, SAPD and Crime Stoppers asking for your help identifying the vehicle that you see here. According to police, on October 29th, around 9 p.m. that night, the suspects inside the white sedan drove alongside another vehicle on Loop 1604 and began shooting. Some of the bullets hit the driver of that other vehicle. The white sedan was then exiting Loop 1604 and getting off onto Braun Road. If you have any information, call 210-224-STOP. It is Thanksgiving Eve, and as we get ready for the feast tomorrow, bar and club owners expecting large crowds out and about tonight. But will business boom or bust on the St. Mary's Strip? 
Ongoing construction causing problems for people to navigate the street by car due to road closures and detours. Getting around by foot just as complicated. Large portions of the strip don't have sidewalks and there's nothing stopping people from stepping right into construction sites. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo says he's trying to address some of the issues ahead of tonight, such as eliminating potential trip hazards, adding orange safety fencing to separate construction areas from pedestrian walkways and pump out excess water that's accumulated there, as well as running street sweepers when construction crews wrap up for the day. The owner of the squeeze box bar, which is on the strip, Aaron Pena, not impressed by words at this point. He responded to Councilman Bravo with this statement, quote, at this point, it's laughable and convenient timing as we have been ramping up pressure on the city and his office recently. Anyone with a staff or a publicist can put together a press release. We didn't ask for that. We are asking the city and his office to immediately send relief by way of funding and expedite this construction, end quote. A new commissioner for the northern part of Bear County was sworn in today, though he only has a little more than half of a term left. That's because Republican Grant Moody was elected to serve the remainder of Trish DeBerry's term as Precinct 3 commissioner. DeBerry was elected in 2020, but she stepped down after less than a year in office so she could run for county judge. Maria Lynn Barnard served in her place as a temporary appointment, but now it's Moody's turn with a little more than two years left. I don't know if it changes things. Uh, obviously, it's a shorter window. Uh, just means we got to get to work and, and get started uh, as quickly as we can, get our feet underneath us, learn um, about, about some of these problems, the details, and, and try to uh, solve them as quickly as we can. The former Marine F-18 pilot and Valero Energy executive says he is already planning to run for a full term in 2024. It is one of the busiest travel days of the entire year. 55 million Americans expected to hit the road or take to the skies for the holiday week. Alyssa Cole joins us now from San Antonio International Airport. It is a busy place. Alyssa, you've been out there for a few hours. Have you seen things calm down at all? Well, not at all. It's actually continuing to be very busy. We're downstairs at arrivals and just take a look. of cars building up there. They're all waiting to pick up those passengers and airport officials tell me they're expecting it to be very busy well into the We're having some problems there with Alyssa's shot, but we'll uh, tell you the information that she had passed on to us that the airport is expected to be busy throughout the evening. And of course, that's something people need to be aware of coming up. Life's idea. Jeez. As we head into even more travel expected tomorrow on the holiday. And of course, all those people got to come back home at some point. You know what? Uh, let's see if we can work on Alyssa's shot and maybe <laughs> okay. get her back before this newscast is over. By the way, coming out at 10, we're going to break down what a holiday travel will look like this weekend at the airports and on the road. For right now, let's talk about weather. That's what a lot of people are worried about with the holiday coming up tomorrow. People traveling tonight, people traveling tomorrow. Adam Kasky. What do you have to say? Uh, get ready for some reduced visibility, road spray, and overall dampness out there starting even later on tonight. And if you're waiting to either leave for your destination now or tomorrow morning, I think you're better off leaving now. The fog should get pretty dense later on tonight and early tomorrow. Right now, just a few sprinkles on the radar screen, just nuisance sprinkles that cause the roads to be damp, and that's about it. You take a look at our live cam. You can see the airport clearly here. Visibility at 10 miles, air temperature at 60, dew point at 56. I point those out because they're important. They're going to get close to each other and meet later on this evening. That will give us 100% relative humidity, widespread fog, drizzle and dampness. And that's going to set in pretty quickly here after sunset. I think by eight, nine o'clock, you'll definitely notice the fog and drizzle kind of like last night and becoming dense and widespread overnight tonight. By tomorrow morning, I wouldn't be surprised if we have visibilities under a half a mile on our roadways, not just in San Antonio, but in the surrounding counties and communities and all across our area. Temperatures holding steady in the upper 50s. We have more rain to talk about. The latest data that just came in indicates a rainier and wetter pattern the next few days. We're going to talk about that coming right up.
All right, thanks, Adam. Sounds like we can expect the view here to change quite dramatically in the next 12 hours or so. But right now, I-10 at the Y, things looking pretty clear, really, from all the different levels you can see in this view. No big trouble spots to make you aware of. Let's take a look ahead now. Tomorrow, the 43rd annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner back in person for the first time in two years. It'll be at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Great event, offers a free hot meal for seniors and people experiencing homelessness or food insecurity. And then on Friday is the 38th annual HEB tree lighting at Travis Park. The 50 foot tall Christmas tree arrived last week. The lights will be turned on around 6.20 p.m. Friday. HEB will provide free bus rides to the event. There will also be free ice skating from 3 to 5.30. The whole event is free and open to the public. Also happening on Friday, the 41st Ford Holiday River Parade. The parade starts at 6 p.m. on the Riverwalk. The Grinch set to be the Grand Marshal for the parade this year. The theme this year is tastes and traditions from around the world. Tickets available to purchase now. You can find a link to buy your tickets on KSAT.com. A quick reminder, KSAT community is in the middle of its Share the Shoes campaign. You can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. This drive is in partnership with San Antonio Police and Zapatos. There are six San Antonio Police substations taking donations right now through December 16th. You can find more information on the KSAT community page of KSAT.com. Still ahead on the news at 6, two sets of parents adopting four siblings. Just in time for the holidays, the special bond this group shares coming up. Bringing a community together nearly six months after tragedy, the annual event that's uniting Uvalde at Thanksgiving through a good meal, shared memories of those who should be there. It's tonight on the Night Beat at 10. The joy in their faces, unmistakable. Four siblings have two new sets of parents during National Adoption Awareness Month. The adoption of the boys on the end was finalized today in Comal County. The little girl and boy in the middle had theirs last Friday in Bear County. Their homes will be about 40 miles apart, but as Jesse Degollado tells us, they'll be connected by love. The three brothers and their little sister posing for their Thanksgiving photo. Are a rambunctious bunch of distinct personalities. It's said Emily, the sassy one, has the makings of a doctor. No. She loves to take care of people and um, and care for them. Paul, the quiet, intelligent eight-year-old with a winning personality. He's going to be our engineer or a used car salesman, <laughs> one or the other. The five-year-old X-Man. Xavier is Mr. Energy. He is. Uh, he is. His nickname is Wiggle Worm. And the big brother watching out for them, 11-year-old Andrew. He is learning to play the violin and is very excited about that. A middle school teacher and a Bear County prosecutor, Chris and Melissa Rust, and a pastor and registered nurse, Scott and Brandy Richardson, had the same reaction when they saw them. We just were in love with the kids. There was there was no question. We loved them, like, instantly. The goal was to keep the siblings together, but to get the individual attention they needed, it was decided the Richardsons would adopt Xavier and Andrew, and the Russ would adopt Emily and Paul. By then, the couples had formed a friendship during weekly visitations, driving between New Braunfels and the south side of San Antonio. We got a really good package deal here. We got two amazing kiddos, two extra amazing kiddos, and then we got a whole nother family. Both homes with a shared faith. This was his plan. The Richardsons and the Russ say there's no doubt they're bonded for life by the siblings they love and who love them in return. It's just amazing. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Certainly a lot to be thankful yeah, for there. Home for the holidays. Yeah. Everybody focused on the forecast, of course. We're going to be spending a lot of time with friends and family, trying to plan out what's going to work with the weather. Kasky. Well, you know, if you play those flag football games or just outdoor football games, you know, on Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's going to be a muddy one. Get ready to get real muddy out Bring there. Bring a change of clothes. Yeah, have a change of clothes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, get ready for dampness tomorrow, and I think most of the real rain and accumulations will hold off until Friday. So let's just talk about, about it all here, and let's look at the rain chances, first of all. And tomorrow, 
it's a slam dunk for the morning fog and drizzle. OK, that's 100 percent, but the actual showers about 60 percent. Most of the day we get into the nighttime hours and that drops to 40 percent Friday. I boosted it up to 90%. I just think we're going to have an old fashioned rainy day with the showers coming and going. At times they'll be moderate to even heavy in nature. Right now we just have the low clouds and a few little sprinkles being detected by the radar. You see some of these very light green colors moving to the northeast near Seguin, even parts of San Antonio seeing this activity moving into Garden Ridge. This is very light in nature, uh, just light sprinkles moving into Chavano Park, almost Hollywood Park as well, but to uh, hit 1604. This is the nuisance rain. It doesn't add up to anything. It just kind of gives you a damp roadway and that's about it. Here's the big picture. This is what we're watching. We've got two systems that are coming together, one dropping in to the Rockies here headed down toward Denver. You can almost identify that little swirl in the upper level flow here, along with some energy coming in from the Pacific. That's going to help out just a little bit. These are going to merge together and basically turn into one big cutoff upper level low in far west Texas and northeast Mexico over the next few days. What does that mean for us? Dampness and then some good soaking rain, especially as we get into Friday. Here's a look at our future cast. We're going to go slowly here. Low clouds to start the day tomorrow with the reduced visibility, of course, because of fog, but actual rain, just some hit or miss showers, maybe even a brief thunderstorm Again, scattered in nature, about 60% coverage throughout the day tomorrow and then tapering off a bit for the second half of your Thanksgiving. Once we get into Friday, that's when I like to call it an old fashioned rainy day. Just when you think of just off and on rain, uh, dampness all day long and even some heavy downpours mixed in. That's what we're expecting on Friday. Notice 11 AM pretty widespread coverage for a good portion of the day. I mean, we're talking to sunrise to sunset. Pretty good coverage across our area. That's why it boosted us to that 90% chance. As for the visibility, this is tomorrow morning, and I do think we'll see widespread visibilities on our roadways down to a half mile or less. So dense fog can be expected for travel tomorrow morning all the way through about noon on Thanksgiving. That's finally when we should shake free from the fog and drizzle for the second half of the day. So here's your day planner for tomorrow. That drizzle and dense fog through noon, then just a few hit or miss showers the second half of the day. 59 in the morning, 70 the high temperature and even some noticeable humidity. These are basically the headlines in a nutshell, just like we talked about uh, damp on Thanksgiving, especially first half of the day, Friday off and on rain all day. We could see a couple of inches tallied up in a few neighborhoods, so up to two inches, I think possible in some of the luckier neighborhoods through Friday. The weekend, however, sunny and warmer. And if you're w wondering what the best day will be to get the Christmas decorations and Christmas lights out Sunday, that'll be the best day. Saturday, not bad. However, very windy gusts up to 35 miles per hour, sunny in mid 60s. Sunday, you won't be dealing with the wind <clears throat> inflatables, right? So Sunday will be the better day. A lot of sunshine, less wind, mid 70s for a high temperature. So a lot to talk about, a lot going on. We'll keep you updated on air and online. All right, thank you, Adam. All right, the Cowboys have a very big game on Thanksgiving, Larry. Yes, against the Giants and one of the better running backs in the league in Saquon Barkley. And speaking of running, the Cowboys running defense, I'll tell you what, it's just horrible. And Micah Parsons is mad. He compares it to a school bully who's trying to take your lunch money. Plus, in college football, Trinity is getting ready to host the defending champion, Mary Harden Baylor, coming up. will try to snap their five game losing streak when they host the New Orleans Pelicans tonight. The start of a three game homestand for the silver and black. The Spurs are not happy with how they played defense on their recent five game West Coast swing. Guard Trey Jones says defense has been their main focus the past few days. Yeah, it's definitely um, our defense. We got to focus on first, you know, offense will come and go. Um, shots, you know, we'll hit some nights, not hit other nights. So can't really control that. But defense, you know, you can control every single night. Spurs and Pelicans will play tonight at 7 at the AT&T Center. Josh Richardson is out with right ankle soreness. UTSA Roadrunner senior quarterback Frank Harris was named a semifinalist for the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award for the second straight season. Harris is one of 16 semifinalists for the award, which recognizes the top offensive player in college football with ties to the state of Texas. Since it's Thanksgiving week, Harris is asked, what is he thankful for? 
Thankful for my parents, my siblings, my family as a whole, um, the whole university, my teammates, coaching staff. Thankful a lot. You know, I'm blessed to be in the position that I am in. Um, and just not really words to explain how fortunate I am to be in the position that I am. Um, but I never guess, you know, I'll be playing ETSA, having the success we've been having. Um, so definitely grateful for everything, and I don't take it lightly. UTSA will close out the regular season against UTEP Saturday, 2.30 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. It will also be Senior Day and Fan Appreciation Day. We're following the game. Fans will be allowed on the field to meet the Roadrunners. After opening the NCAA Division III football playoffs with a 14-7 home win against Hardin-Simmons, the Trinity Tigers are now getting ready to host Mary Hardin-Baylor, the defending D3 national champs. The Tigers are 11-0 this season. Their Crusaders are 10-1. Trinity won its first playoff game since 2002 last week, and now they have to find a way to get by the Crusaders. They're a good football team. Um, they have a, a very explosive offense. They have a very good defense. They have a good culture. They've been cultivating it for a while now. Um, but just similar to us, um, just putting the building blocks all together. So it should be real fun going against them. They're very, very explosive on offense. They've got tremendous athletes, they're physical up front. Defensively, they fly around to the football. It's not, um, it's extremely rare if you turn on the film, they don't have eight guys around the football. So we're gonna have to play our best football game, but we're excited about the opportunity. Trinity will host Mary Harden Baylor Saturday at noon at Trinity. The Tigers are in the second round of the playoffs for the first time since 2002. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will host the New York Giants tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. And once again, the boys' run defense will be front and center, trying to slow down Giants running back Saquon Barkley, who's second in the NFL this season with 953 rushing yards. Micah Parsons said teams will continue to run at them until they can stop it, and he's comparing it to a bully at school. People are going to still try you. It's almost like a, a bully trying to take your lunch money every day until you say no, that's enough. They're going to keep taking your lunch money. So I'm at that point where I'm, that's enough. Um, you're not going to keep trying to take my lunch money. Do not try to take his lunch money. Mm -mm. Especially not on Thanksgiving. <laughs> exactly. Don't take his lunch money on Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back.